Hello, Eric. Uh, you're an estate agent. Can you tell us a little bit about your um, involvement in the estate agency business over the last uh, 20 years? Yeah, I have, as you confirmed, been in the real estate business for 20 years. And um, I've had my own company now for 11 years. Um, and uh, the business is predominantly residential real estate, both sectional title, freehold, and we also do uh, some derivative development um, as well, development sales. Okay. And uh, how many houses do you think you've sold over the last 20 years, roughly? Uh, I'm not sure. It's way into the thousands, I'm not sure. Um, it's okay. not just me that sells, I've got agents working for me, but uh, as a company we've, we've done a good couple of thousand house sales per se. Mm. And how do you value your property? How do you get an idea for what it's worth? Have you got a bit of experience in that? A very good way of valuing a property is to do what they call a CMA, Comparative Market Analysis. What we do is we'll take, for example, five current properties that have been on the market, similar to your home. Then we'll take five properties that have been sold. And we'll take five properties that have been withdrawn. And right. from, from working that out, you can deduce well the sold is the one we're really interested in. Uh, the current property in the market is often inflated because there's always a bit of contingency. Clients normally charge 5 to 10 percent more on the asking price than expect offers. That's kind of the norm in South Africa. Right. Eric, tell me, how do you value properties as an estate agent, an experienced estate agent? Probably the best way to value a property is to do what they call comparative market analysis. Um, it's normally divided into three sections. So you would start at looking at normally current homes that are on the market, right. which is normally priced slightly higher than what the sale price should actually be. So it's often inflated. Okay. People uh, are hopeful about the price they're going to get. Yeah, sometimes people get full asking price, but it's more the, the norm. It's often an out-of-town buyer that's not too queued up that would pay a top dollar price. Right. Um, your second option would be to to look at the sold properties right. in the area as per registered deeds in the deeds office. Okay. So you could do a deed search and say, well, out of the five similar homes in the area, three bedroom, two bathroom, double garage, down that street, what were the last recent sort of four or five sales in the last three to six months. Okay. So it'll be quite current. It can't be, you can't go back two years, it'll be irrelevant. So you've got to have a sort of a time limit on it. Right. So you'd say houses on the market currently and houses sold in the last three to six months. And then most importantly, if uh, an agent's got a good scrapbook uh, and he's kept all the info from the, from the numerous um, independent newspapers, what, what they would do is they would make note of what's currently on the market and how long it has been on the market. Mark, there's a team on right. that and why have we decided that? Um, in general, if you want 100% commitment from an estate agent, you need to give 100% commitment from your side. So we would prefer as an agency to have sole mandate or one opportunity per listing. That way you can spend more money on the advertising um, and there's no risk of double commissions and uh, who the effective cause of the sale is. So it is, it is beneficial to give mandates, but um, you need to do your research and choose the best possible agent to do the job. Right, so say we get a property and it's obviously, you don't know every area, you're, you're the person that's managing it, the estate agency side, but um, we would send out to four or five agents in that area and ask for valuations. Or, or sometimes if we find one agent, we might just send it to one if we know that that agent's I good. Think it, I think it's a good idea to approach four agents because you know what, you've got to do market research and I wouldn't give my house to the first agent that I meet if I don't know them from a lot of soap. So I would say it's probably better to, to send out opportunities to four agents, have a look at their marketing plan and their strategies. Mm. And in certain instances, open mandates work. Um, agents don't like it, but you know what, it maybe could be a sort of opportunity for that particular company to prove themselves so that in future you'll give exclusivity right. to the sole agency so say of property. Our, our whole project's about turnover. If we can turn over that capital um, four times a year, yes. um, if, we can, if, we can, if they sell it in six weeks and we're actually turning over that pro property, that uh, capital, eight times in a year, then we've doubled our revenue from that capital. So perhaps we can say to the agent, if you sell it in six weeks, we'll give you a sole mandate the next time. Something like that? Yeah, it could be incentivized, but remember, um, there's often a misconception. Uh, it's a common argument we have with clients is when 
you um, you value a property correctly based on all the research, and then ironically, the first person that comes through buys the property, <laughs> and then the seller's questioning, um, you know, are you going to reduce your commission? Where the agents actually really done his job extremely well to find the right person yes. up front. You know, is it better to do that or wait 12 months for a potential buyer? Well, from so our property's point of view, there's no, you, and as no an question. Ag- as an agency, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. But in actual fact, the, 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 the goal is to sell the property in the shortest time, get the highest price for the least amount of assets. Absolutely. Very true. Now, what do you think about the other members of the team? Some of them you've known quite well for many years, others you've maybe met recently, but what is the quality of this kind of management team compared to maybe some of the other management teams you've seen in other companies? Well, Peter Gerson, for example, has got huge experience in, um, in business. Right. He knows how to do cash flow projections and marketing plans and strategizing. And he's been in retail and distribution and all that sort of thing. And uh, with fantastic business brand. So you, from that perspective, you're in with a, a really clever business brand. Mm. But we've also got a good legal team. Eric, you were talking about the, the team. Yes. Krishna is um, a conveyancing attorney mm. and uh, need not be fooled by good looks. She's also a very good business person. Mm. And she, she's got a very, very good um, company that's grown fantastically uh, even through tough times. A lot of conveyancing companies have gone un- under and she's actually uh, excelled. Um, and then there's also advocate Douglas Shaw, who's not just an advocate um, that knows all the legal background. He's done, dealt a lot with all sorts of things from litigation to repossessions to evictions um, but also he's a good business uh, brain behind that so there's a very lucrative team and then as I mentioned earlier I, c- I would be involved with just the, the guidance and the pricing and obviously price is very very important when you try with the property and we also don't want to sit on the stock for months and mm. Very true and so generally your prospects for this uh, fund do you think they're good? I think the prospects are fantastic and I think that um, for people that um, really want to make some quick money, especially the agents out there that want the opportunity um, to find stock in a market where it's gradually becoming what they call a seller's market, um, it's a tough time to get stock because now you're competing with a lot of agents. Um, You know what, it's just bread and butter deals, you can do one or two of these every two or three months and um, get paid handsomely because we'll be quite generous on the commissions. Mm. I'm sympathetic to estate agents. (laughs) Eric, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you very much.